brethren. And please keep praying for me. Hallelujah. It's such a privilege when we stand here to speak the word of the Lord, but we're all human beings, and so we do feel that anxiety. But we know if we're doing it for the Lord, in the name of the Lord, with the power of the Lord, then there is something that God has prepared for every single one of us. And this morning, I would just like to share with you briefly um, this theme. When intercessors agree in prayer, God's promise is released. Hallelujah. Now, you heard the two scriptures that were read this morning a little while ago. But I'll come back and remind us. Here we are, gathered, ordinary people from ordinary walks of life, with one purpose and one intention, to worship God and proclaim to the world his message of salvation through trust in Christ our Savior. But here's a newsflash, brethren. According to Ephesians 2 verse 19, we're not ordinary. We are fellow citizens with the saints and members of the household of God. This house has Christ as the chief cornerstone and every other part, including us, are fitted together into a holy temple in the Lord. And in the middle of this house dwells the Holy Spirit. We're not ordinary. We are part of a holy structure in which the Holy Spirit dwells. So as intercessors, people who pray to God on behalf of others, we come with the knowledge that we are influenced, led, and guided by the Holy Spirit that dwells within us. When we set our hearts to pray, we know who we are praying for, as Sister Liberty reminded us in her message some weeks ago. We are meeting the conditions of faith, right motive, and righteous living. And as we heard from Brother Tafari last week, we have love, hallelujah, in our hearts for God and his people. And all the other speakers who have challenged our hearts about our role as intercessors, they have put different pieces of this puzzle that we are working our way through this year. They're putting them together and it's for us to take it on board, go back and look at those messages online, remind ourselves, because we are going to go through some terrible times, terrible times. I call the killing in Croydon a terrible time. We must realize that we cannot take our foot off the accelerator in terms of prayer. We have to keep on pressing. Praise the Lord. God in turn has promised us in his word, we heard it this morning, that whatever we bind, when we bind something, we forbid it from happening. Whatever we bind on earth will be bound in heaven. And whatever we loose, whatever we permit on earth, will be loosed in heaven. In two places in the book of Matthew, Jesus gives this promise. He gave it first of all when he was speaking to Peter about who everybody's saying that he is. He was pleased with Peter's answer, but he had to remind Peter no flesh and blood gave you this answer. It wasn't a man. It was the Father. Then he tells him, upon this very truth, that I am the Christ, the Son of the living God, I will build my church, and the gates of hell 
shall not prevail against it. And then he goes on to tell Peter that he's going to give him the keys of the kingdom of heaven. And whatever he binds, hallelujah, those are the keys. He gives him the authority to bind and loose. Peter is our brother. He's one of the saints who is part of this holy temple that the Lord is the chief cornerstone of. And we are part of that same building. So the promise to Peter is spilled over into our lives. Now, Jesus was just talking to Peter at that time. But the second time he spoke about this binding was when in Matthew, later on, Matthew 16, verse 19, he was really talking about how we as Christians should treat a brother who sins against us and won't own up to it. This is the other time that God used this phrase. But I'm not focusing on that at the moment. But Jesus said, where two or three of you agree on whatever you ask for it to be done it will be done in my, it, I will do it. Let me go through that again. Jesus tells us where two or three agree on whatever they ask for, it will be done. Why? Because we are gathered in his name. There must be agreement when we come together to pray. When we stand to pray, there has got to be wholehearted agreement from everybody. We often hear in church when the prayer, the person who stands to pray, stands up to pray, said, let us agree in prayer. And what do we do? We bow our heads and we close our eyes as if that's what it means to agree. We're going to bow our heads and close our eyes and wait on the person to carry on. No, there's much more involved when we agree in prayer, it means our hearts and minds are focused on the theme of the prayer and the words that are uttered because we are walking with the person through territories. We are tearing down strongholds in spiritual realms. We are binding situations that need to be confined and we are loosing hallelujah and permitting what we, things that have to be permitted did you hear brother junior when he says i release peace he said it in his prayer we do it all the time and when intercessors come together we must agree and as we agree we're going forward in that prayer. And we are united. That is the important thing. There is a unity because the Holy Spirit is leading the way. He is central to the prayer. He is central to the words we utter. He is central to the theme. He is central because he knows the mind of God. So if you are blood washed, you are calling yourself saved, sanctified, filled with the Holy Ghost. You cannot pray a prayer that is opposing what God your Father is interested in. It's impossible. He dwells within us. And so when we pray, we're praying what he wants us to pray. Hallelujah. And not only that. God says, whatever you ask in my name, that will I do. If you shall ask anything in my name, I will do it. John 14, 13 to 14 and John 15, six, verse 16. Hitherto, here he says it again in John. He says it repeatedly in that book. Hitherto, you have asked nothing in my name. But now, I'm telling you, ask, and you will receive. That's John 16, verse 24. So God is telling us, look, 
pray. Whether you pray on your own, because when he spoke to Peter, he was speaking directly to one person. He says, whatever you bind, whatever you loose, it will be done. And then again, he says, when you come together as two or three, touching anything concerning my name, whatever you ask. First of all, God says, when there's two of us or three of us come together. Now, we are more than two and three. The first thing God is going to do is he's going to be here. He's going to show up. He is in the midst. So we must acknowledge his presence in our midst. And he is listening to our conversation. He's listening to the conversation that's directly going to him. And he's listening to the other conversations. But when we are determined, when we have decided, you know what? I am going to pray about this matter. Come, help me to pray. When we call our prayer partners, when we meet together to pray, God says, I'm right there. And whatever you ask, whatever you ask, I will do it. Praise the Lord. We are just a channel, brethren, through which the Spirit of Christ offers up the request according to his will. We are praying as intercessory partners in partnership with the Holy Spirit who knows the mind of God and will take our words and he will transform them. The Bible tells us that Holy Spirit is groaning. He's groaning deep within. Groaning. We don't hear the groans. We're not aware of the groans because we're speaking to God. But the Holy Spirit is doing a supernatural work as we pray. Hallelujah. And God who knows his spirit and knows the things that are close to his heart. He promises to do what we are asking. Praise the Lord. Let us be bold when we pray. Let us have the confidence that God is right beside us. Let us meet the condition. We cannot afford to be lax, casual with the way that we live. We cannot afford for anything to come in as a hindrance to prayers that we want to pray. The way I treat you and the way you treat me matters. You cannot treat me anyhow and go to God in submission. It doesn't work. He's not going to hear that prayer. If I regard iniquity in my heart, the Bible says, God will not hear me if I hold malice against someone because they've done something wrong to me. But because I didn't do it to them, it's okay for me to go and pray to God and ask him for X, Y, and Z. No. If I regard iniquity, if I hold you in malice, if I fail to forgive you, if I fail to give you the right hand and shake your hand and still greet you, all oh, glory be to God. He's not going to hear me. The Bible says in the same Matthew, Hallelujah, if your brother offends you, if he does it, go quietly, privately, have a word with them. Tell them what offended you. Don't go with a sledgehammer approach. Don't go with that approach, but go because sometimes people don't know. Sometimes our tongue runs away with us. And sometimes what the enemy does is he just goes in and he just mix a little bit here. And he mixes a little bit there. So by the time you get the information, it's far beyond what, what really happened. So that is why you have to go to the source and find out what is true. And when you talk to the person, 
When you talk to them and you tell them, this is what happened. This is how you made me feel. They then have the opportunity to say, I'm sorry. But if they refuse, the Bible says, go back. Go call a couple of witnesses. Now, the Bible doesn't fill in all the gaps, you know. But I have to use my common sense and the sense the Holy Spirit gives me. I'm not going to find two good buddies that will stick up for me in every situation. Those aren't the people I'm going to find. I'm going to find some consecrated people. People who see things in a different way. So they're not going to just stick up for me because I'm their friend. No, I'm going to find two people who I know pray, trust God, live good. And I'm going to call them and I'm going to say, listen, this is what happened. This is what I've done. Now let's go. Bible says, I must bring you as my witnesses back to that person. And so you go. And if that person in the face of the two witnesses, if they conform and if they say, all right then, okay, I see you're serious. This really hurt you. And they say, sorry, that's done. You've won back your friend. You've settled things and it's nice and peaceful. But the Bible is clear. If that person refuses, you then have to go to the church. You have to go to the church. You have to go to the church and let the church know. But again, the Bible doesn't tell us if you should just pick up the phone and speak to every member of the church. No, it doesn't say that. You may have to go to the head of the church and speak to the head of the church and lay it out there. The head of the church will make the decision because they're the shepherd. They're the ones that God has appointed over the church. They have to make that important decision because the Bible is very clear. The Bible says, look, if this person is out of order and will not behave, will not apologize, and it's absolutely clear that they have done something wrong, you must treat them like a tax inspector, a tax collector. And there's another phrase that is used. So the Bible is not, it's not playing around. Because you know what? When sin is in our midst, you go and read your Bible. When people belonging to a community commit sin, and they do not repent. They do not do what is right. God is angry. God doesn't like it. And God will punish. And we as a community, we want God's favor. So we have to deal with things. It's not pleasant. And sometimes it hurts. And sometimes people think that because you're a Christian, you must always be nice. You must always be the way that they think you should be. But you have to do what the Bible says, what God says. It's his word. It's his will. So it's obedience to God. And you can check because you have the same Bible. So we must be very careful, people, that we, when we see the word, we don't just Pick out the bits that sound nice. This is good. This is a good sound bite. That's okay. We must see the whole thing and balance everything out. We have to. Because when I go to God and I say to God, forgive me, hallelujah, my trespasses as I because I'm talking about me. As I forgive those who trespass against me. If I'm not doing it. If I'm not doing it. I can't expect him to forgive. And I will share an experience with you. One day someone did sin against me. A member of my family. 
So it was a very long time ago. And I was angry. Really angry. And when I found out, realized what they had done, oh, I prepared myself. I knew exactly what I was going to say to them. I knew exactly how I was going to take them down with my words. I planned it in my head. You know how your mind can have that conversation and it runs away and this is what I'm going to say. Before I saw the person though, um, you know, there was a day, bef it was a day that th I was expecting to see them the next day, but that evening, that night, as usual, you know, you're praying. And I was praying the Our Father prayer to finish off, I know, finish praying, praise God, hallelujah. Coming down now with the Our Father prayer to s finish everything off nicely before going to sleep. And I got to that part. I got to that part. I said, forgive us our trespasses. Brethren, I'm not lying to you. I couldn't say the next line. I tried, I tried, I tried, I tried. I tried. I could not utter. God just showed me who I was. He just showed me that I was not prepared to forgive. And yet I am asking him, the holy God. I had to cut the prayer. I had to change my attitude. I had to pray again and I had to repent. Hallelujah. I had to repent. Right there in my bedroom, I repented repented before God again. I said, God, you're right. I need to say sorry to you first and foremost. Praise the Lord. Because you know what? Offense will come. It will come in our natural lives. But how we choose to deal with it is how God, that's what God is interested in. The person didn't kill me. The person wasn't trying to kill me. They were trying to make life better for themselves by taking advantage of me. But you know what? At the end of the day, someone else is taking care of me. So whatever you want to do, brethren, to someone else, be careful because it's God that takes care of us. It's God that takes care of us. So when you lose out on the left side, you will not lose out on the right side because you have somebody who is greater, hallelujah, than the enemy. Greater, praise the Lord. So let us not believe that when we are touched by evil, touched by someone doing something wrong to us that we are going to lose out in some way. We are human, so we will feel the pangs of hurt. We will feel loss. We will feel anger. All of those emotions will come. God doesn't actually condemn us for having the feelings. But if we try to deal with that situation... And then come to him with our nice self. He, no, he's saying, no, 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 no. That's, that's not how you do it. That's not how you do it. He says, be anxious for nothing. Be anxious. Don't get wound up about those things. But come to me. Come to me. Talk to me. Praise me. Put your petition before me. I am the one who guards your heart and your mind. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Because that is what the crux of the matter is. Your mind. You don't want your mind to go crazy from what has happened to you. And God, the God of peace promises that if we come to him and say, God, I'm angry. I don't want to forgive this person. Just tell him the truth. 
Tell him how you feel. He already knows. I feel this way, Lord. This is what I want to do. But God, it's your will. Let your will be done. Don't forget, brethren, Christ, our Redeemer, he got to a point in his life when he had to pray that prayer. If it is possible, let this cup pass from me. I don't want to go through crucifixion. I don't want to go through that pain. I don't want to go through that rejection. But he said, nevertheless, not my will, but your will be done. And that's what we have to do every time we get into that place where we want to hit back, fight back, we must remember to pray. And if we can't pray, the word today is we're two or three. Find somebody, get together, pray about the situation because God promises to be there with you and whatever you're asking for. Because if you're asking for God to release you from the feelings of pain, revenge, and all of that, he will do it. He will do it because he's God. He can't lie. And he wants us, he wants us to be pure, to be holy. Remember, we, you know, when we close our service and we, we say that doxology, now unto him who is able to present us faultless. Hallelujah. That is what Christ's aim is, to present us faultless to himself. So we have to, we have to live the way that he charges us to live and realize that there is a power and authority that we have when we pray when we pray, when we pray, we have an authority because God is there. The Holy Spirit is doing that work and God promises that he will do it for us. There are times when you have to bind some situations in the home, at work, amongst your very own friendship group. You have to bind some situations. And there are times when you must lose some situations. Lose blessings. Lose peace. Lose prosperity. Lose health. Say it and believe it. Because God promises he will do it. If it's in his will. Praise the Lord. So let us keep praying and interceding because God has given us the authority. Are you worried about situations that are oppressing your family, your workplace, your community, your friends, or even yourself? Find a partner. Join the prayer line. If you have never got up at six o'clock and dialed that number, let me encourage you to do so. Nothing's ever done before the time that it should be done. No judgment. Give it a try. Join the prayer line Wednesday or Friday. Join the Zoom prayer sessions Monday, Thursday. God says that where two or three are gathered, hallelujah, I'm right there. That's where you'll find me. I'm right there to hear the prayers and to answer them. And I know sometimes I don't reveal that I'm even there, but I'm there and I'm soaking up and I'm praying and I'm trusting God. And I know that God has performed miracles, miracles on our behalf. He has healed, he has delivered, he has transformed, he has done some things 
Some people need to talk. Because unless you talk, someone else won't realize God did that for you. Talk about it. Give God the glory. When we talk about what God has done for us, he gets the glory. He gets the glory. He gets the praise. We get the blessing. Hallelujah. We get the blessing because we hear what we should hear. And we have the confidence to say, well, God, if you can do that for her, if you can do that for him, why can't you do this for me and my family? I'm sure you can do that too. And you come with your faith. Because now you've seen the reality. You've heard it from the horse's mouth, as it were, that God did this thing. You have a witness. So now you can come to God and say, God, you did this. Your word says this. You cannot lie. Hallelujah. He honors his word. So if his word says, I'm there, I will bind, I will loose in heaven what you do on earth. So therefore, brethren, let us do what the Lord says and prove him. Prove him. He will do it for us. May God bless you. And today, if you feel that you want the brethren to just join and pray, when it's time for prayer, you come. Don't stay back there. Come. Show that you, you trust God and his word. And you need this intercessory prayer over you. May God bless you this morning. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God bless you.